<laughs> so the whole paradigm is called wisdom of the crowds that uh, Chaturangi, I don't know if he meant, I don't know if Nate Silver even called it that. Did he call it that? Wisdom of the crowds? No, no. Okay, that. well, he should have. <laughs> So, uh, you might want to share it. Who, who, who is presenting this? Oh, you are presenting. Yeah. So take the microphone. Share the screen. Share the screen. Uh, so the topic that I got was from this page first. Uh, and uh, his dissertation topic was data driven and knowledge analysis for realizing crowd system on social media. He's currently an applied scientist at Amazon. I have posted his LinkedIn thesis and we will follow the Google Doc so if you want to check it out later. So um, when I got this topic, it was a word was obviously wisdom of crowd, and it was in the work on the social media work in the same word. Uh, the basic definition of wisdom of crowd is this idea that a collective opinion of a diverse and independent group of people is almost always better than uh, uh, expert or uh, just a bad uh, friend, friend, bunch of random people. So I believe you understood that I have stressed on the word diverse and independent, and these two are the core of his uh, research topic that he is trying to find the diversity in, and uh, trying to find what kind of diversity put in a group of uh, cluster people so that he can get the best output uh, or the best results. So that is basically, uh, so his thesis statement states that diversity inferred from social media using knowledge improves collective intelligence for event prediction without using historical performance data. So the bold uh, words is very important. So earlier works on wisdom of crowds uh, have been, initially it has been with a bunch of uh, people, uh, random bunch of people, and then see how it is working uh, compared to an expert. And then later on, it turned into a, a, a bunch of people, but using the historical data, previous historical data, how they perform, and then using that and creating a cluster and then crowds and so on. And then later on, uh, they went, uh, uh, the work was, uh, with uh, perceived uh, diversity, that means you select a random uh, bunch of people and then you ask them, them in the group whether they are diverse and so on. And what he is going to work on is, in, uh, he worked on is inferred diversity. And uh, this is, I think, uh, one of the first work that has been done uh, based on social media on a very big uh, data set. So he used user base of around 3000 something uh, users and then based on that we <coughs> try to create diversity uh, and cluster and then select the crowds based on that cluster so he tried to answer three questions which uh, are at the end of the uh, his thesis one is is it possible to import diversity using social media data and then what kind of diversity is to accurate prediction and then the third one is do such diversity measures allow for a wider scale. So after the end of his dissertation, he answers all these three questions. So I'll just skip over the answers and then uh, we'll get to that. So, uh, so as I said, at the core, the problem is diverse crowd selection. So how do we select these diverse people to get the uh, you know optimal? So for that, he had a bottom up approach as well as top down approach. So first bottom up approach, content based bottom up approach. So he had uh, content based clustering as well as crowd selection. So in content based clustering, he 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 tried different methods. So the first method was content based clustering. Uh, for for that he uh, created users. Uh, he uh, turned these users content into word to web. And based on the similarity measures, percent similarity measures, he tried to cluster them, uh, cluster them together, and then see how it is different uh, from uh, you know the other methods, and then see the result. So this was one of his papers. And then later on, he uh, used content uh, users based on the intent of the users, and based on the intent, and then how it is different from the 
other methods. So these two were the clustering that um, uh, measures that he used uh, initially. And then later on, he used these clusters to. Uh, so now he has clusters. Now he has to select this. So he used uh, different methods like random and then pairwise, etc. So this this was his initial work on uh, his dissertation. So one of the interesting observations that was talked in his uh, dissertation talk also was does diversity differ with crowd size? So in his case, he uh, in and I guess in most cases, uh, smaller diverse crowd size perform better than large size. So in his case, even though he uh, selected, he had like three thousand something user base. His uh, his uh, crowd size was only six, which I found very ironic because why is the crowd size very you small? Just six. Yeah, just six, six. Only six. Yeah. Well, no, we actually did. We we explored crowd size. Yeah, uh, so on, on the x-axis, but you get a an optimum at at six. So he explored from zero to all the way up yeah. until, and then he couple hundred, I think. All the way up until, huh? All the way up until what? Uh, oh, I don't know. A couple hundred. Uh, yeah. Three hundred, maybe. I don't know. And six was the optimum. Six was yeah. yeah. So it goes it goes like this. Which In terms of you know performance. Because as far as I understand, these six people then might be experts. So the no, we checked for that. Yeah. That that, we, that was not the explanation. Yeah. For so this, we that was and, no. and or oversampling from small crowds. We we checked against all of that. Kind of problem. I don't remember what our explanation was. I I think we decided that larger crowds were introducing noise, but I would have to go back and look. I don't I don't remember exactly, but I do know that we checked to make sure that we weren't confounding with expertise or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I have a curious question. I will ask later. Is there any correlation with numbers? Numbers with what? Numbers numbers. Yes. Number of what? We'll come later. Number of friends. Oh, friends. Um, no, not only that. Dumbass number says 150 is the number that many, you know, kind of relationship human brain can actually handle. Oh. I don't, and the closer uh, circle is 10. So that's yeah. probably the number is 6. Anyway, we'll come I, I don't recall us talking about that, but, you know, it was kind of a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he got this because his methods were. Um, the that uh, bend towards six. So if you use something else, the crowd max crowd size might be different. That's what for the same uh, as, for the same problem. If you change the method, uh, like the uh, the way in his in in which he used the clustering and uh, the crowd size uh, and uh, selection, then he might get a different case. That's what I remember him saying. It is not exactly six in every single case. That's what I. Yeah, but it's not huge. There's no. There's not a benefit to uh, increasing the crowd size. Is really the the and, bottom line. Uh, Doctor Shed in his talk also uh, mentioned that this is actually pretty good because uh, for a large size crowd size, it is very difficult to manage every one and mm -hmm. have a collective opinion. So to have a small size with diverse and get a really good output is. We should say just a, a, a small word about the domain that we did this in. So we did this in fantasy football. Do you guys know what fantasy football is? That's where. Do you know what fantasy football is? That's where you pick t uh, members of your ideal team from across the league, and you look at how well your ideal team performed based on their individual performance in an upcoming match, okay? Now, what we particularly looked at was captain points scored um, because it was just too hard to assemble all the data. So you have the performance metric there, and then you we paired the names of people in fantasy on the fantasy football site with their Twitter names, their Twitter profiles. And so we could determine and do an analysis of how what they were talking about, what what was the content that they were talking about in their Twitter feeds, and then pair that with their performance, and and we knew what their captain choices were. So that's how we did the analysis. So what you what you need for this kind of a study is an outcome metric, yeah. and in this case, we had the outcome metric of of fantasy football scores. Yeah, the teacher said was fantasy football. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, this was his initial work on uh, how proud and how he got it. So um, one of the uh, the two limitations which he found was he did not consider much of the user user attributes and also uh, the major major problem was how do we define a context? Like mm -hmm. what is context for you may not be the context for me. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I, if you consider AI uh, AIC Institute, I and Vedant may be in the same cluster, but mm -hmm. when you consider as a PhD student, I, he may not be because I'm not a PhD student. So mm -hmm. it, it depends on the context that we define. Amit, we just followed up with Shreyansh's dissertation because Chaturangi mentioned the foxes and the hedgehogs and and uh, wisdom of the crowds. So that's we just moved to that. Uh, I'm expecting you to read what you have there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you expect me to be able to read what you have there? Oh, I have Yeah, uh, 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 I can read with difficulty. You should read the right. You should always keep it as such. Okay, so this was his initial mm -hmm. work, uh, and uh, so this this was the limitation that so the limitations for user attributes and how we define context. So then. He went on to have a top down knowledge based approach. Mm -hmm. one, uh, so, one of the interesting observations uh, I found uh, in his dissertation was a group of nodes is interesting if the number of edges is higher than if the nodes were assigned at random, which, so, so that there will be a lot of context uh, between the group of nodes. So, this for this, he proposed this paper, and this is so, one so of the. That implies what? So there is a lot of similarities between the group of, uh, if, if there is a lot of edges between the nodes, then that means there is a lot of uh, correlation similarities between, that's why so, there is an edge. No. There are many choices. Sorry. Uh, is it talking about a lot of similarities or is it talking about a lot of communication or is it a lot of, uh, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, you know, is it that they are working together? Is it, you know? It's a, it's a, there are different notions. So what is it that he is looking for? So is it a friend network or communication network? Uh, he, he's, uh, sorry, what? So basically, you are talking about reciprocity. Okay. So is it a friend network or communication network? What it is? Is it a friend network or communication No, it's a content network. It's, it's, it's content overlap. He's trying to find the optimal context. Content, and content similarity. Okay. So and that is on Twitter, Facebook. Or something else? Uh, Twitter. Twitter. Okay. Mm, it might have been. I don't remember in the community detection one if if we used Reddit for something. I but Twitter, all Twitter. Okay. Okay. So this is I I no, think it's, 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 is it network of people who know each other or is it network of people who are uh, uh you know communicating on uh, they're not com they're, they don't know each other and they're not communicating yeah. it's just content overlap they're talking about the domain in the same way that's this was the 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 um example was uh what is it uh, the um fantasy football oh uh, yeah yeah fantasy football Right. Where you select, where you select, t, uh, uh, and there's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, see, they were talking about the same, uh, um, yeah. Well, same, same, and the same criteria. So, the, the classic one that we explored in one of the papers, I don't know if it's one of the ones cited here, 
is whether or not people are talking about a choice of team captain because it's the obvious choice and everybody likes this guy, et cetera. And whatever terms you would use to express that idea versus I'm going with the non-obvious choice, the things that people aren't looking at, the person that people aren't looking at. So we, I don't remember what we called that, that, that distinction, but we assembled two different groups based on whether or not they were talking in one way or the other way in their language. And then we sampled from the clusters based on content similarity to get the diversity uh, finding that you're noticing there. So, uh, major crowd, and there was a book called so James. Uh, Sorecki. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, I, uh, I read, so there is that certain conditions for to be wisdom of us uh, to have a wisdom of crowd effect. Is one is diversity, which is the most important. Mm -hmm. and you have to have independence, so you cannot influence each other. And that there was certain other condition. So diversity and independence was which he uh, talked about. And let's not skip this last point because it's really important. You don't want to bury the lead. Uh, the knowledge graph and is the say knowledge graph enhanced community detection. So the idea is you can't compose these communities simply based on a common set of lexical terms. You have to have a knowledge graph that says there are three, four, five different ways for talking about popular choice. And there are three, four different ways about talking about the differential choice. So there was a knowledge graph component here that we used to enhance crowd um, separation. And that's what's in that last paper there that you'll see. So in this paper, so I'm just giving a summary of this paper. So in, in this paper, he started with the input graph, which is a domain-specific hierarchical knowledge right. graph, and one of the most generic uh, optimal context. And then he computed the edge weight using context of direct pressures, like uh, he started with notes and then recursively go up to the parent. <coughs> find uh, the information content of that and then using weighted jacquard to try to find context in that. <coughs> and then he used this to, uh, and then he used community detection techniques like login community level detection to get the community. And then finally, he mapped it into the hierarchical knowledge graph to get the optimal community context. And then he repeated the same thing using uh, to get the edge weights and then get the loop the whole process until he gets the optimal results. So this is what so he started with um, the no, a, a hierarchical graph and uh, of context that we re reweight the edge edge right. weights accordingly. Mm -hmm. And then he found a community and then this and context and then loop uh, and then the same thing to get the edge weights uh, and then finally he gets the optimal result. Yeah, now you do have to be careful. You can't, if as you ascend in the abstraction, you could ascend infinitely, uh -huh. right? And so there has to be some sort of sweet spot yeah. where you get a nice separation of groups that gives you good results in terms of diversity without mushing everything together. And that's, that's it, I guess. the whole optimality analysis uh, uses uh, information content and security yeah as we go down the information content goes down but as we go up the purity goes down so he has to find a balance between yeah those. so it was a um a multi-objective decision and um Pareto optimization i think is what we, what he ended up using to solve that uh, i have that a question <clears throat> ranjit so i think uh, uh, you guys are just talking about it but this seems a little bit like you would run into a chicken and egg problem where you use community labels to decide context that covers maximum labels and then you use context to reassign labels. It seems like you're iteratively optimizing between community label mm -hmm. and uh, community context and using the information in each other. Is that right? Yes. So before Ranjit, before Ranjit answer to this, just an addition. So people working on community detection more than three, four decades, people call it ill-defined problem because the definition of community is never defined. In this case, it's a community of topic. 
some case community of you know people some case community of colleagues some say community of race mm -hmm. so what is the definition of community is always very you know sketchy you know yeah please go on. okay so so this was i i believe the baseline of most of his work his most cited paper was something else but i think this brought the baseline to uh, every uh, most of the work that he did so in future i believe we can use that as as Tandraki told uh, mm -hmm. in geopolitical forecasting or things like that we can always rely on wisdom of crowd rather than a word of opinion and then we can use expanded knowledge sources to get better results yeah, I want to know what the most cited paper was. <laughs> Is that that important? I just want to know. I can't read it. Oh, oh, that's a totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. Seems like. Heyman's work, like the work which was done by Shreyans, is kind of uh, an improvement and taking forward the work done by. Heyman. No, we. There was. It was. It the the issues were really quite different. Right, but there was. I, to my understanding, even in Heyman's work, there is uh, the discussion about communities, identifying communities, the intent of different communities, and. Uh, well, we did have the seekers and suppliers. Is that the one? Yeah, we did. We did do a little bit of rule based stuff, distinguishing between people who seem to be offering um, supplies in a disaster context okay. and people who needed supplies. And so I would say that's there's a little bit of rule based work that went on then. But oh my God, what was that? 2014 and Shreyansh is what? 2017 or yeah, after that. So. I mean, it was quite a bit of advance in Shreyansha stuff relative to what we were doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, CSCW, that was a really good hit. <laughs> I don't know. Is Savannah, I don't know what we're doing next. Is Savannah presenting? I can present. Hmm?